Have you ever pondered the reality of the events that unfolded on September 11, 2001? It's a question that at first glance might seem unsettling, even taboo. But it's a question that beckons us to question our understanding, to challenge what we've been told. Today, we embark on a journey into the world of the unexplained, the controversial, the conspiracy theories surrounding that fateful day in September. Theories that suggest a reality far removed from the narrative presented by mainstream media. We delve into the depths of the unknown, exploring the intricacies of theories that have emerged since the tragic event. Theories that have been rejected by some, embraced by others, and have sparked heated debates worldwide. From the collapse of the Twin Towers to the attack on the Pentagon, we wade through the murky waters of conjecture and speculation. We examine the unsettling questions that have remained unanswered, the mysteries that have been buried within the rubble. Prepare to journey through time and unravel the mysteries buried within the rubble of the Twin Towers. In the immediate aftermath of the tragic event, the world was in shock. The dust had barely settled and the piercing sirens wailed through the cityscape, echoing the collective heartbreak of a nation. The world watched in disbelief as the Twin Towers, icons of American prosperity, crumbled to the ground. But amidst the chaos and the carnage, the finger of blame was quickly pointed. Al-Qaeda, the radical extremist group, was named the perpetrator. The United States, backed by its allies, declared a war on terror. It was a war, they said, against those who sought to disrupt our peace, our freedom. Ground Zero became a symbol of resilience, a stark reminder of the cost of freedom. The world stood with America, sharing in its grief and its resolve to bring the culprits to justice. But as the dust of the collapsed towers was swept away, so too was the initial shock that had gripped the globe. And in its place, curiosity stirred. Questions began to surface, questions that challenged the official narrative. Was it really just Al-Qaeda? Could the towers have fallen due to the impact of the planes alone? Were there other forces at play? The voices of skepticism were initially faint, drowned out by the roar of jets flying off to distant lands. Yet, they persisted, they probed, they poked, they questioned. And as the war raged on, these voices grew louder. The skeptics scrutinized the events of that fateful September morning, not through the lens of the global struggle against terrorism, but with a focus on the home front. The world's eyes were fixed on the Middle East, on the caves of Afghanistan and the deserts of Iraq. Yet the skeptics, these seekers of truth, turned their gaze inward. They began to look closer to home, scrutinizing the rubble of Ground Zero and the corridors of the Pentagon with a discerning eye. They questioned not just the who, but the why and the how of the puzzle that was September 11, 2001. The collapse of the Twin Towers in Seven World Trade Center sparked the first wave of conspiracy theories. Now, let's delve into the controlled demolition theory. This theory suggests that the tragic collapse of the Twin Towers and Seven World Trade Center was not due to the impact of the hijacked planes or the subsequent infernos, but was actually a result of a well-orchestrated controlled demolition. Proponents of this theory argue several key points. First, they point to the velocity at which the towers fell. They contend that the buildings plummeted to the ground at near freefall speed, far quicker than would be expected from a structural failure due to fire. To them, this rapid descent indicates a deliberate planned demolition. Next, they highlight the symmetry of the collapses. Both towers, they argue, fell directly into their own footprints. In a typical building collapse, you'd expect a more chaotic, less uniform fall. But the Twin Towers in Building 7 seem to implode, collapsing inward onto themselves, a hallmark they claim of a controlled demolition. Furthermore, these theorists question the presence of molten metal found in the wreckage. They argue that the fires caused by jet fuel would not be hot enough to melt steel. Yet, reports and images of molten metal at Ground Zero fuel the belief that explosives were used to bring down the buildings. Lastly, they point to the sudden collapse of Building 7. Unlike the Twin Towers, Building 7 was not directly hit by an aircraft, yet it fell in a manner similar to a controlled demolition. This, they argue, further bolsters the theory that explosives, not fires, were responsible for the collapses. However, it's important to note that these arguments, while compelling to some, have been subject to rigorous scrutiny and debunking. Investigations conducted by agencies like the National Institute of Standards and Technology, along with independent researchers, have provided counter-arguments and evidence that support the official explanation of the collapses. They explain the rapid and symmetrical falls as the result of the unique construction of the towers 
and the intense heat generated by the burning jet fuel. Despite these debunking efforts, the controlled demolition theory continues to captivate many. In a world rife with misinformation, it serves as a stark reminder of the importance of critical thinking and the pursuit of truth. While this theory has been widely debunked, it still holds sway over many. The attack on the Pentagon is another event shrouded in mystery and speculation. This monumental incident, part of the tragic events that unfolded on September 11, 2001, has served as a breeding ground for an array of theories, each trying to explain the unexplainable. Among these, one theory stands out. The suggestion that the Pentagon was hit not by American Airlines Flight 77, but by a missile. Picture this. A commercial airliner, a Boeing 757 supposedly crashes into the Pentagon. But where is the wreckage? Where are the wings, the tail, the engines that should have been scattered across the lawn? Eyewitnesses and first responders reported a surprising lack of large debris at the crash site, fueling speculation that perhaps it wasn't a plane that hit the Pentagon after all. Then there's the hole. The initial impact left a hole approximately 18 feet in diameter in the Pentagon's facade. Now consider the size of a Boeing 757, with a wingspan of over 125 feet and a tail height of over 44 feet, wouldn't you expect a larger, more noticeable impact? The discrepancy between the size of the hole and the dimensions of the alleged plane has been a major sticking point for skeptics. Moreover, the trajectory and precision of the attack raise more questions. The claim is that an amateur pilot with minimal training maneuvered a commercial airliner in a complicated downward spiral, descending 7,000 feet in two and a half minutes to strike the Pentagon at ground level. This feat, according to some aviation experts, would have been extremely difficult even for a skilled pilot, let alone a novice. But what about the official narrative? What about the passenger remains and personal effects reportedly found at the scene, or the security camera footage showing something, albeit blurry and indistinct, hitting the Pentagon? Critics argue that these pieces of evidence have been manipulated or misinterpreted. Then there's the question of motive. Who would benefit from launching a missile at the Pentagon, and why? Some theorists suggest it was an inside job, intended to justify invasions and advance geostrategic interests. Others propose that it was a cover-up for something even more sinister. Again, despite evidence debunking this theory, many continue to question the official narrative. The lack of large plane debris, the small hole in the Pentagon's facade, the seemingly impossible flight path. These elements continue to fuel skepticism and doubt. And while the answers may not be clear, the quest for truth continues as does the debate surrounding the attack on the Pentagon. Behind every action, there is a motive, and 9-11's was no exception. As we delve deeper into the labyrinth of theories surrounding the cataclysmic events of September 11th, we stumble upon a strand of thought that shakes the very foundation of our trust in the system. This theory posits that the US government or certain elements within it were not just aware of the impending attacks but actually allowed them to occur. But why, you might wonder, would any government allow such a devastating event on its own soil? The answer, according to proponents of this theory, lies in the realm of geostrategic interests and the thirst for power. They argue that the tragedy of 9-11 was exploited as a pretext to justify invasions, particularly in the Middle East, and to advance America's global standing. The aftermath of 9-11 saw the United States launch the War on Terror, which led to invasions of Afghanistan and Iraq, despite Iraq having no proven links to the attacks. This theory was fueled by the widespread criticism of the Iraq War and the administration of President George W. Bush. Critics argue that the Bush administration manipulated the fear and anger resulting from the 9-11 attacks to garner public support for a war that was, in essence, a part of a larger geostrategic plan. In this context, it's worth noting the Project for the New American Century, or PNAC. This think tank, which included members who would later become part of the Bush administration, had advocated for a stronger U.S. presence in the Middle East. Some see this as evidence of a premeditated plan that was set in motion by the events of 9-11. Of course, these are theories, and they have been met with strong rebuttals. Critics argue that such theories are based on misinterpretations, out-of-context quotes, and a fundamental misunderstanding of international relations and politics. They point to the numerous investigations and reports that have found no evidence of complicity or foreknowledge on the part of the U.S. government. But for proponents of this theory, the questions remain. Why were there so many intelligence failures leading up to the attacks? 
Why did the US go to war with Iraq when no connection with 9-11 was established? And why were certain facts and details overlooked or brushed aside in the official investigations? The search for answers is not about sowing distrust or spreading fear. It's about understanding the forces that shape our world, the decisions that alter the course of history, and the hidden machinations that often lurk behind the scenes. The search for truth often leads us down paths less traveled. And as we journey down this path, we must remember to question, to seek, and to never stop probing the mysteries of our shared history. In the face of doubt and suspicion, a movement was born. As the dust of the Twin Towers settled and the immediate shock of the 9-11 attacks began to fade, questions started to rise. These questions, fueled by inconsistencies and perceived cover-ups, sparked a movement that would come to be known as the 9-11 Truth Movement. This is not a fringe group of conspiracy theorists tucked away in the corners of the internet. Rather, it's a collection of individuals from all walks of life, from architects and engineers to pilots and military officials, all united by a shared conviction, the belief that the public hasn't been told the whole truth about the events of September 11, 2001. They advocate for a new independent investigation into the attacks, one that isn't constrained by political agendas or predetermined conclusions. The 9-11's truth movements calls for a new examination of the events of that fateful day are not just about the Twin Towers or the Pentagon, they are about the very nature of truth and accountability in our society. They question not only the physical evidence but also the political and social narratives that have been woven around the attacks. As the years passed, the movement's influence began to grow. Around the fifth anniversary of the attacks, mainstream media started to pay attention. Coverage of 9-11 conspiracy theories increased, and the movement's claims began to reach a wider audience. The theories, once dismissed as baseless, started to gain traction. They became topics of serious discussion, not just in online forums but also in mainstream media outlets. The 9-11 Truth Movement, despite facing criticism and dismissal, continues to stand firm in its quest for answers. They continue to question, to probe, to challenge the official narrative. They refuse to accept the easy answers, to be silenced by the chorus of conspiracy theory accusations. Instead, they choose to question, to seek the truth, no matter how uncomfortable it may be. And it's here where we find the essence of the 9-11 truth movement. It's not just about questioning the events of a single day. It's about a broader pursuit of truth, a call for transparency and accountability in a world often shrouded in secrecy and deception. For members of the 9-11 Truth Movement, seeking the truth about 9-11 is not just about uncovering the facts of a historical event, but also about challenging the power structures that shape our understanding of the world. The quest for truth is a journey, not a destination. And so, the 9-11 Truth Movement continues its journey fueled by a steadfast belief in the power of truth, driven by a demand for answers, and united by a shared conviction that the truth, no matter how unsettling, must be known. Despite the passage of time, questions about 9-11s continue to linger. You see, it's not just a handful of people questioning the official narrative. Numerous surveys reveal that a significant portion of the population holds some belief in alternative theories about that fateful day. Now let's clarify something here. It's not that everyone who questions the mainstream narrative believes in a grand, sinister plot. The reality is much more nuanced. Many of these theories focus not on clear-cut dichotomies of good and evil or right and wrong, but rather on gradations of negligence and complicity. What do we mean by that? Well, some people question whether all the facts were presented transparently. Others ponder whether certain aspects of the attacks were allowed to happen, or if they were simply overlooked due to negligence or incompetence. Some even wonder if there were elements within various institutions that had knowledge of what was going to happen, but chose not to intervene. The point is, these theories don't necessarily imply a vast, shadowy conspiracy. Instead, they suggest a spectrum of possibilities, from gross negligence to willful ignorance to yes, even complicity. And it's this range of possibilities that keeps these theories alive. You see, it's human nature to seek answers to want to understand the why and the how of events, especially ones as impactful as 9-11. And when the official answers seem incomplete or unsatisfactory, alternative theories begin to take shape. But here's the thing, even if you completely disregard all these theories, you can't deny their impact. They've become a part of the cultural conversation around 9-11, influencing films, books, and countless internet threads. And these theories have done more than just provide fodder for late-night discussions. They've sparked a movement, 
the 9-11 Truth Movement that continues to call for a new and independent investigation into the attacks. This movement, born out of a desire for clarity and truth, shows just how deeply these lingering questions have affected people. In the end, the truth is often stranger than fiction. Whether you believe in the official narrative, subscribe to an alternative theory, or are somewhere in between, one thing is certain. The questions surrounding 9-11, the doubts, the theories, they all underscore our collective need for truth, for understanding, and ultimately, for closure. As we delve into the depths of these theories, we must remember to question everything. We've walked through the unsettling questions that arose in the immediate aftermath of the September 11th attacks. We've examined the controlled demolition theory and the controversy surrounding the Pentagon attack. We've pondered over the hidden motives that could have driven such an event and acknowledged the relentless determination of the 9-11 truth movement. We've also grappled with lingering questions that continue to fuel debates and discussions to this day. Remember, these theories are not just about finding alternative explanations. They are about challenging the narrative, pushing boundaries and seeking the truth wherever it may lead. Whether you lean towards believing the official reports or find yourself swayed by the alternative theories, there's one thing we all can agree on. There's more to the story than meets the eye, and that's why it's so important to keep questioning, keep digging, and keep the conversation alive. In the world of history, the truth can often be stranger than fiction. It's a world full of mysteries and secrets waiting to be unraveled, and that's exactly what we intend to do here on History Facts. So if you find yourself intrigued by the complexities of history, the hidden truths, and the untold stories, then History Facts is the place for you. We're dedicated to bringing you engaging content that challenges the mainstream narrative, encourages critical thinking, and sparks your curiosity. Join us on History Facts as we continue to unravel the mysteries of the past. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this.